So today's set of exercises is again going to expound upon the thought that the uh, tensegrity model, which is basically a child's toy, but it represents uh, the way the human body moves and that one part is affected by the other parts whenever you move one component. So if I move my arm, I'm trying not just to exercise my arm, I'm trying to exercise my, my hand, my forearm, my shoulder, my back, my neck, they all engage together. Just as the model shows if I move and stretch one part, all the other parts are gonna move also. So to begin, what we're going to do is feet together, which is a neutral or zero position. From there, I'm going to step out to about double my shoulder width apart. From there, I'm going to pivot in what I call the bow stance, where my right knee is bent, my left leg is straight, and I'm trying to keep my knee over my ankle. What we're trying to avoid is having the knee go from one side to the other or too far over the knee or too far over the foot. Because what ends up happening is you put more strain on the knee joint when you go too far forward. You definitely put lateral strain on the knee joint if you go side to side. So we try to keep that, that good straight alignment. The back leg, I try to keep fairly straight but it can bend slightly and I turn my toes on a 45 degree angle. So for this exercise both my feet are on a 45 degree angle towards the right side of my body. Sink down from your hips, let the knees bend, let the back knee bend slightly. So what that does is it lowers my center of gravity as to give me a bit more stability. I'm going to take my right hand, put it on my lower back just so that I have somewhere to keep it as a reference point, but also it puts some tension on my shoulder joint and keeping the hand below the back. I take my other hand and as if I'm drilling my hand down into the ground, into some uh, loose sand, twist and turn the fingers, the wrist and the forearm joint. So keeping that tension, I extend my arm to the right side of my body. So just like that, that model again was pulling in different directions, I have the tension on my lower body from my feet to my hips, the tension across my lower back to my shoulders, my neck, extending all the way down the shoulder to the forearm to the wrist and fingers. So what that's doing, we call that the tourniquet effect, where you're cutting off circulation in some part of the body to stop the blood flow. So as I'm doing that twisting, I'm restricting the blood flow in some parts of the body. But then when I release, to go to the next part of the exercise, the blood's gonna flow much faster and comfortably through the, the openings. So again, we pivot, we reach and twist. Then I open up. From here, I'm just gonna switch to the other side. So as to give you the other perspective, shifting to the left side, I put the left hand on my lower back, my right hand drills in towards the ground, wrist, forearm, and shoulder gently twisting reaching to the left side of my body. Again, trying to make that connection from my feet to my hips to my shoulders and arms. And you're gonna see that concept come up quite often as we continue to go through many of these different exercises. We push from the feet into the hips, the hips direct the torso, the shoulders and arms finish the exercise. So what ends up happening with that Again, it's the tourniquet effect of squeezing and restricting blood flow, but we're also um, working kind of like we're squeezing a tube of toothpaste. We're starting from one end of the toothpaste would be the feet, middle part of the toothpaste would be the midsection. We finish with the opening where the uh, toothpaste is going to come out of the tube. And that would be the arms and shoulders. So we're trying to restrict the blood flow, release the blood flow. Restrict the blood flow, release the blood flow. So that way the body ends up working like a big hydraulic system with pumps, not just the heart pumping, the diaphragm pumps, and then the tension on the muscles, the, uh, the fascia, the bones, all the different parts are engaged so as to keep the blood moving to one part of the body to the next. So again, we start from the beginning, zero position. Feet apart, here's shoulder width, here's double my shoulder width. Sink down pivot to the right side. So your right knee bends, knees directly above your ankle, no lateral side to side movement. 
with the knee joint. The other leg is fairly straight, but even bending slightly is fine. Right hand comes to my lower back, left hand drills to the ground, reach and extend. So if you're doing it somewhat correctly, you're gonna feel a connection from your left foot all the way to your left hand. Maybe you crossed your back, your neck, shoulders. Whatever's tightest is where you're gonna feel it the most. We pivot and switch to the other side, drill to the ground, and reach. So I wanna make sure that we're uh, doing deep regulated breaths. So right about here is where I start to inhale. As I reach out, exhale. Inhale as you open your chest, inhale. Exhale as you cross your body, inhale. Exhale. So that's like the first two parts of the exercise. We have, you know, the opening, closing, opening, closing, opening, closing. So let's keep adding on. From here, when I come back to the opening, I'm going to now take my other hand and they catch up, like the hands are coming together, and then painting a big circle on the front. Now I'm going to draw a circle on the ceiling. And then I come back to the hand at the lower back, and reaching across the body. I'm going to move forward a few feet here. So it's to start the exercise again, pivot, reach across, open up, circle in front of the body, circle above the body, close and twist across the body. So I open up. Other hand catches up. Paint the circle in front. Other hand comes to my lower back. I paint the circle above as I arch my back. Drill into the ground, scoop. So going back to what we were saying earlier, the opening and the closing, and the pushing from the feet to the waist to the arms, I'm going to again switch. So I push my feet to my waist. My waist twists the shoulders, and I finish with the arm. Going back again, the feet push, the waist uh, zeroes out and goes back to the center, and I finish with the arm movement. Other arm catches up. Inhale. Exhale. Right hand on my lower back, other hand above my head. Inhale. Pivot from the feet, turn the waist and torso, finish with the arms and shoulder. Open up, same thing again. Big circle in front, hand to the lower back, my left hand, I arch, try and reach behind my body, and then twist, cross across the body. So that whole time, once again, I'm being aware of where my chin goes, because wherever the chin goes, that dictates whether my back is easier to be in a rounded position or in an arched position. So when I'm here, my chin is somewhat neutral. But when I get to this point, I raise the chin. That helps to arch the back. Dip the chin, round the back. Arch, twist across the body. Let's do one more. Open up, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, open up. So again, let's start from this spot right here. Feet go shoulder width, and then double. Pivot into the bow stance, hand to the lower back. The other hand drills and reaches out to the right side of the body. So I'm gonna add on a little bit more, open up. So I circle in front, let the spine move. Circle above, let the spine arch. When I get to the side here, I'm going to put the left hand on the lower back. I'm gonna do the serving teacups exercise again. Bring the arm around twist to the opposite side of the body. Let's try it again. Open up. Other hand catches. So with the circle, again, wherever the chin goes, my spine follows. Round the back. Arch the back. Serve the teacup in towards your hip, to the side, above the head. Pivot back into the bow stance. Reach across your body. To finish it up, I bring my feet close together again. Make a big circle looking up to the left and then down, inhale, look up to the right, and then down, looking straight up, 
Breathe out slowly as you bring the arms down in front and squeeze the diaphragm towards the backbone. So that last exercise with the finishing exhale is really important about keeping your, your posture you know, more comfortable and upright. And what we're trying to do by stretching side to side is stretch this muscle, the sternocleidoid mastoid muscle. The muscle connects to the base of the skull and connects to the collarbone. As we continue to age, that gets somewhat tighter. And a lot of times if we're leaning forward a lot, we're reading, we're checking our phone, we're watching television, we're somewhat hunched forward, it starts to tighten. As that tightens, it pulls the chin forward, the shoulders forward, the upper back comes forward. Next thing you know, your back is adjusting to that because it thinks that's the normal position that you try to you know, stay in. So then the muscles and the bones start to form and get tighter to hold that position. So by stretching that muscle side to side and then up and then down, every time we you know, basically start the set of exercises and we finish the set of exercises, it helps to relieve tension and stress on that, on that muscle. So that's it for this set for right now. See you next time.